Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In today's video, I wanted to share with you someone that is really unique in the prepping community. It's somebody that came across my radar recently, and as soon as I found out who they were, I got really interested in them because they are a type of person that you don't oftentimes see in prepping circles. Uh, you know, if you've watched a lot of prepping channels, you know that you know it's primarily male. It's primarily like middle-aged people. Uh, you know, sometimes they're angry. They're not all angry, but this person is really the antithesis of a lot of that. And even their screen name is Happy Prepper. And in, in fact, when I saw Happy Prepper uh, in in my comment feeds, I was like, "Who is this? This is someone unique. I want to check this person out." I checked out their website, uh, and they did not let me down. They're a really different kind of voice in the prepping community. I wanted to share them with you. So as the reveal, I'm just going to cut right to who they are and say hello to them. Hey, Happy Prepper and Dad. Uh, thanks for being on on this program. Hi. Hey, Praxis. Hey, well, I, I really appreciate you guys being on for all the reasons that I mentioned, and I'm really interested, uh, especially because I have a seven-year-old boy myself, and, uh, you know, getting young people interested in this kind of stuff is something I'm interested in because I think that it would be great in his life. He has fun with me, but I'm really interested, uh, you know, to find out your story, Happy, about what brought you down this road because I think it's a wonderful road. I think it's a, a way of appreciating life in a lot of different ways. You know, a pre, you know, counting your blessings kind of, uh, you know, if you realize things aren't always going to be perfect, it kind of makes you appreciate things when they kind of are. So I want, I really wanted to hear your story. Uh, so the first question that I had for you was, uh, and this is uh, kind of something that relates to your age is, uh, given that you kind of have shared responsibility for your life, you know, it's not, you're not, you know, a grown adult where you, you're kind of making all your own decisions, you know, you kind of share um, <clears throat> a sense of responsibility for your safety and everything with your parents. Uh, how does self-reliance fit into your way of thinking about pre uh, preparedness for various life events? You know, you, you're not, you know, you're not an island, you know, you live in a family. How, how do you kind of work with that, Happy, you know, between, you know, your thoughts on preparedness and and safety and, and your parents' thoughts? I'd be interested to hear your, your thinking about that. So first, thank you for having us. And that's a really good question. Well, I think prepping's more of a family thing that you like do together instead of more of a personal thing. So like we try and learn like prepping skills together so we can get more prepared and we like stock up on things together and we really learn together as a family. Yeah, and and, and Happy is actually, you know, he'll bring up things, Praxis, that we uh, we didn't think about. So a lot of times even from, you know, doing uh, our, our gardening and our, our yeah, even starting some canning and thinking about things a little differently, but to your point with sort of a positive bend of, hey, how can we be prepared in case of, you know, uh, certain events that may happen, or a uh, very, very uh, high probability of happening, or even something like um, just learning about these things so that, uh, you know, we are really prepared if, if, if something does happen, we can together, we can figure it out. Yeah. Well, the idea of doing things together as a family is definitely something that I advocate for. I, uh, you know, on my channel all the time, I'm talking about, you know, it's, it's really difficult to do this kind of stuff alone. You know, you, you can't be awake 24 hours a day and being with a group, being with a family, I think is a great way of approaching it. You mentioned that you've started thinking about different events that, uh, you know, you might be uh, thinking about preparing for, you know, how could you be more prepared for that? Obviously, all of us are preparing for aliens invading by airdropping bird flu infected clown zombies. I mean, that's obviously on everyone's radar. But what are some other events that maybe have popped up for you that, you know, you might not have otherwise thought about, uh, you know, as you've gone, gone down this journey? I'd love to hear, Happy, your thoughts about like things that have, uh, you know, come to your mind while you've, you know, done more research and things. So I think we should prepare on like more of a broader scale. We shouldn't just focus on one event, we should focus on multiple of events, but I think like the little natural disasters, like snowstorms, hurricanes that happen more often are the ones we should prepare for because they happen more than this big apocalypse or an alien invasion, so. And, and, and maybe happy to share one of the things with Praxis is something that, you know, during uh, Superstorm Sandy, right? That was an event. Yeah. And, and maybe share what, what that was like, you know, for us. And that, that was a wake-up call in a lot of ways. Yeah, so we were in Superstorm Sandy. 
So we had to like go to like different relatives and we lost power and then we ran out of firewood so we couldn't heat our house and we had to rely on other people instead of relying on ourselves. Yeah, we were out, what, 12 days without power? Yeah, about 12 days without power. That's definitely rough. And I, I know that that's a lot of people's experience that, you know, having some of these little bumps in the road really lets you know what you are or you're not prepared for. I mean, even just a couple of days without power in the winter can be such a problem for a lot of people's houses. So that's a similar story I hear from a lot of different people. And it was interesting practice as a, as a change of where we were from a few years ago. We, we were unfortunate to, lost, to lose power because of a snowstorm. And uh, Happy, uh, actually, his stockpile helped us make it comfortable. We just lost, I think it was two days. Why don't you share that too, Happy? What we what do we eat? And, you know, what so, do we have? during those two days that we lost power, we ate really good. We ate hot meals. We ate mountain houses. And we ate hot meals. And we were pretty comfortable. Well, that's great to hear. I mean, that, that's what I always think is that, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's not necessarily... Yeah, you know, we talk about like, you know, these preps, they could save your life and everything, but 99% of the time, and I, I'm just pulling that number out of the air, I don't know what the percentage is really, but the vast majority of the time, preps are really great for just making your life more comfortable through those little bumps in the road, even if it's as simple as, you know, being prepared for locking yourself out of the house and having a key buried somewhere. You know, that's a prep and it's not going to necessarily save your life, but it can make your day a lot nicer. And it's nice to hear that you guys had that kind of experience. What other kind of impacts have you seen on your daily life with having, uh, you know, gone through this kind of preparedness? Are there, you know, just, you know, little day-to-day -day, uh, moments when, you know, being a more prepared person has had an impact on your daily life? Well, so I have more confidence to, like, deal with big events like that, like Superstorm Sandy. And there are a lot of immediate benefits. One of them is that I feel ready for, like, really anything that life can throw at me. And, and I think, too, like, even, even um, one of the things Praxis Happy has got us set up with is uh, uh, first aid kits for the cars, uh, go home bags, right? Is yeah. Go get home bag for the cars, and also Happy's involved in, in Boy Scouts, and it's funny how the how the intersection is between yeah. your, what you do with Scouts and, and what you do sort of from a prepping perspective. So that's another interesting uh, uh, point of view. Yeah, yeah, preparedness used to be just sort of a normal part of the fabric of everybody's life. It's only really maybe in the last, you know, half century or so that people have kind of gotten away from it. It's this weird fringe thing to like be prepared for anything, <laughs> which seems kind of weird to me. I mean, it seems like a normal part of like biological imperative to just, you know, kind of be prepared for a few little bumps in the road. But that's great. I, you know, and there are all those benefits that come along with it. But also, you know, I, I'm realistic about it. There are also trade-offs, you know, with, with being more prepared, you know, just, you know, for an example, I, you know, heat with wood here at my house, uh, you know, as much as I can. And, you know, honest to God, it's not the most convenient thing in the world to like step outside in the middle of winter and be splitting logs it's like you know sure it's good exercise i'm getting you know fresh air and sunshine and you know you can you can look at it all the, all those positive ways but there are all are kind of trade-offs you know sometimes maybe you don't want to go outside and you know be splitting wood and lugging firewood or you know uh you know maybe you don't want to think about like well how much uh you know food should i be getting to put into my stockpile it is sometimes you could look at it as a little bit of an extra burden are there are there parts of your life where you've noticed things like that where you know you know you're getting the positive benefits but you know there's also kind of like the pain in the butt kind of part of it have you noticed that or does that not even register for you guys well i feel i don't really have any trade-offs or sacrifices because it's my hobby and i love it and, and and i think too practice to your point it's it's the exuberance you know uh, happy being on the younger side um I'll give you an example. We had a, a large tree fall in the backyard, and um, because of Happy's interest, we actually have a silky saw that he, you know, learned about from a Canadian uh, prepper. And uh, instead of cutting it down with a chainsaw, uh, Happy encouraged us, and and we did it together. So it wasn't just just me. It was definitely Happy as well. We took a while to cut it down, but then to your point, we actually chopped up some firewood. But I could definitely see how it could be um, a bit of a burden or a labor of love, if you will, to, to do that. But happy so far is very uh, energetic uh, uh, with it. But, you know, there is some extra extra work involved, like 
when we do canning, right? Yeah, uh, it takes a long time to can stuff. Yeah, and gardening take, takes a bit to collect everything and, and set it up. So I think practice brings up a good point. There is there is some extra work involved, even if it's even if it's looked at as fun. Yeah, it, it definitely makes you appreciate how easy it is to just go to a store and buy a can of tomatoes <laughs> versus you know having to go through the process of canning it. Because I I do that that as well. So happy as a as a prepper, as someone that's into preparedness, it's, it's you know kind of one of the sides of that coin is looking at like, you know, the what ifs, you know, what if this happened? What if that happened? And a lot of those what ifs are kind of like negative things, like whether it's like, well, what if our, you know, tire blows out when we're driving down the road? You know, what if, uh, you know, our pipes freeze or we, you know, we run out of power and, you know, and then there's all the, you know, the crazy stuff about like, you know, what if aliens have invaded and everything like that? Um, but, you know, there's all those kind of what ifs, but what do you really, uh, what do you see for yourself in your future? Like, where do you see yourself in 10 or 20 years? I know, you know, you're young and, you know, I, know, I think when I was your age, in 10 or 20 years, I probably pictured myself as being an astronaut or like a zookeeper or something, <laughs> or in a circus or something like that. But what do you picture your life as being like in 10 or 20 years? A lot, you know, a lot of preppers, you know, they, you ask them that question and they say, oh, everything's going to fall apart and, you know, we're going to be in like this, you know, terrifying future. I don't, I don't picture that as being a necessary, uh, you know, outcome of where we're headed. I think that we can have a bright future too. Where, where do you see your future going? So that's a very great question. So I see my future as like an entrepreneur and maybe an investor because I like to start like little side gigs and businesses and I would also like to be like on my own homestead with a bunch of animals. Why don't you share too with Praxis? Uh, Praxis, we recently did a road trip uh, last year to Vermont. And uh, um, one of the things I think that opened Happy's eyes was, you know, we're not too far from, you know, uh, New York City metro area. So seeing some of the open spaces really got Happy's imagination going. Why don't you share with Praxis? I think a little more detail because you do talk about it quite often about what you would like things to be like in the future, right? Like where you would, what type of place you'd like to live in and all that. So in the future, I would like to have like a lot of land, like, so I could really like play around with like animals and like garden. Are there any parts of your life right now that uh, you uh, feel are uh, you know, things that you've learned to maybe appreciate more by having come to this kind of preparedness mindset. We mentioned earlier, you know, it, it's, it's a lot easier to appreciate a can of tomatoes at a store, you know, if you've gone through the process of, you know, growing the tomatoes and canning them yourself. Are, are there any things like that in your life where you've come to, you know, appreciate things in your life a little bit more, you know, having seen it through the lens of, you know, preparedness and everything? So I appreciate like basic stuff more. Like I pre appreciate like a hot like nice meal and a shower because I do a lot of camping usually like once a month with the Boy Scouts and I've been on really crappy camping trips <laughs> where like our tent got wet and it was just bad so I appreciate more like basic stuff like a dry warm bed I appreciate more and yeah I appreciate like the basic stuff what about maybe share with Praxis we we had a water heater go recently we were only without water for couple days but why don't you share with some of the tools that you had that that we utilized so we like our water heater broke down so we couldn't take a shower so we had to use a camp shower and it was really bad (laughs) because the water was really cold and now I appreciate more of like a warm shower. Yeah, those camp showers don't last very long. <laughs> you, you go through that water really quickly, don't you? It, it's, it's funny, right? The little, it's your point. A, a can of tomatoes, when you think about the effort that goes into that can, we do, we take it for granted. And even things like, um, you know, it used to be common knowledge to, to do things like start a fire or uh, change a tire even. And now we're so used to other things and, and, and electronics are great um, but I think things like scouts and prepping they're very helpful because when you're looking around and, and you need someone to step up and do things sometimes you gotta realize it's you you know that has to do it so yeah that was that was definitely helpful well I had a question for you dad about uh, you know what what is it what 
and you've already kind of touched on this a little bit, but what, what does it feel like to you to have a kid that thinks more about this type of stuff? You, you, you referenced that, you know, there's just been some real tangible, you know, real life circumstances where Happy's preps have actually made, you know, your family's life easier, you know, during things. Uh, but uh, in terms of like just thinking about his future, does it give you comfort thinking about the idea that he is thinking about these things, gaming things out, that he'll be more prepared for things? Does it ever worry you that, you know, he might, you know, be thinking about things that you know might might worry him or you know unduly, unduly so you know you know with young people you want to to some degree kind of protect them from having worries that maybe are unnecessary well, what are your thoughts on that yeah and i wanted to again great question i wanted to call out to your uh the videos in particular ones that happy has shared with me i i like the fact that you always have a at least the ones I've seen and what you've shared, a positive bend to prepping as opposed to thinking of all the negatives. Today I want to talk about a rather unconventional, probably underutilized weapon for self or home defense, and that's the chainsaw. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't wear it myself, but we're going to give it a run. You know, when, when Happy first brought this up, again, as I shared, he's always been involved in Cub Scouts. Actually, our whole family, my wife and I, my younger son, uh, are into to Cub Scouts and, and scouting in general. So when Happy first brought some of this up, I you know, it was certainly in, in the vein of what we're used to. But some of the things, um, when we started watching things like, what was it, Doomsday Preppers yeah. on TV? I, you know, I, I did, to your point, you do... You do think about, hey, there, there's a lot of, um, not to not to be negative on the prepping community, but there could be folks that do have this negative view, and you certainly don't want a young person to to be thinking that way, especially at this point of, you know, their life should be filled with hope and, and opportunity. Um, so in, in the beginning, we did have, uh, we were taken a little bit aback, and I, we did have to talk to Happy a couple times about things, but... That's that was only a small part. I think very quickly, um, anything from you know happy uh, uh, will prep water, um, and sometimes he goes a little overboard. And from my perspective, uh, but uh, the mountain houses and to and to, to what we discussed earlier, having the food, uh, we have MREs even, and we don't have an entire basement full, but we have enough that hey, it does come in hand. I mean. Where we live is not a, a rural area, but yet we still lose power, um, you know, routinely. And every, even things like uh, fire building, fire starting, you know, we have a fireplace. And not only when we go out camping, but even during those outages. Um, but I also think that there's a lot of fun. You know, when we do, when Happy got the idea to do a raised bed, we just built another one in the backyard. But um, we had a blast. It was messy, but canning tomatoes, right? We, we, we pickled peppers, we pickled uh, tomatoes. So again, back to the earlier comment, these are things that my family, being we're, we're Italian, um, used to do this on a regular basis. And it's been forever since we've done it, even maybe a generation. So it was a lot of fun. I think uh, getting involved with with happy in, in, into prepping. Well, that's great. I think we'll leave it there because that really says it all. That it's uh, being prepared, preparedness mind, preparedness mindedness in general. I think is a a real enriching way to to view your life. And I think you guys are just wonderful examples of that. And I'm I'm glad that I was able to share you uh, guys with you know my very limited pool of subscribers. So I appreciate you guys taking the time. Happy, was there anything else that you wanted to share with anyone, maybe someone that was your age that might encourage them to go down the road that you've gone down or at least be interested to explore it a little? Well, I think like if there are younger like people interested in prepping, I feel like they should learn like more skills instead of like stocking up because like knowledge is more valuable than supplies. Uh, if you guys would like to learn more about Happy's channel, uh, there's a link in the description down below. Be 
I, you know, no trolls, just the trolls just shouldn't go there. In fact, this video has been too long that the trolls haven't even made it this far. But if you want to check them out, you know, go there, let him know if you think that it's great. Uh, okay, that's a loaded sort of suggestion. Go there and tell him that you think it's great what he's doing, because I think that it is wonderful that he's learning all these skills. And I think it's always wonderful we can encourage people and, you know, share with them, uh, you know, our experiences and just keep us all growing. And it's a community just being stronger and more resilient. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.